What's going on, guys? My name is Neil Villapiano, and welcome to another edition of Mofobo Network Presents here on YouTube. Thank you guys, as always, for taking some time out of your day to check out this video. It means a lot to me. And if you enjoy it at the end, please leave a like, you know, comment, and definitely subscribe so you don't miss any videos that we put out every single week here on this YouTube channel. And as always, we, we talk about a lot here on this YouTube channel, as well as the podcast, which I will talk about a little bit later on. But, you know, we always have a ton to talk about, especially in the world of sports. And today, I want to talk about something that I didn't get to talk about last week. Um, unfortunately, I, I had to take a week off when it came to making YouTube video. But I'm back here this week, and I wanted to share something that I was going to share with you guys last week. Now, if you haven't already noticed, I do have the logo behind me. And if you can't really read it, I'll explain it right now. As of last week, it marked the 100th anniversary of Negro League Baseball. So this is an extraordinary uh, de uh, per year for the Negro Leagues that unfortunately no longer exist, but at the same time created and allowed some of the greatest players in Major League Baseball history to be given an opportunity to play this game and eventually play in the Major Leagues. Now, Obviously, as you can see, the Negro League started in 1920, and it's pretty much, uh, the, the, the league was pretty much created to allow, you know, Black and African American players to play somewhat professional baseball, because at the time when the Negro League started, there was no integration. Obviously, Black players were not allowed to play in, in the major leagues. Now, for those of you that, I would imagine most of you would know by this point that Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and everything. But you know what? There were a lot of great players that played the Negro Leagues before they were even given an opportunity to play in Major League Baseball. So here's some things that I wrote down that I wanted to share with you guys. Last Tuesday made it 100 years since the Negro Leagues were created. The Negro League, any associations of African-American baseball teams actively large between 1920 and the late 1940s. When black players were at last contracted to play major and minor league baseball, the principal Negro Leagues were the Negro National League between 1920 and 1931 and also 1933 to 1948. The Eastern Colored League, which was between 1923 and 1928, and the Negro American League, which lasted from 1937 to 1960. A gentleman's agreement, and that's put in quotes, among the leaders of what was then called organized baseball, the major and minor leagues of you know, African-American baseball, erected a color bar against black players from the last years of the 19th century until 1946, although these lead leaders rarely admitted its existence. So there are a lot of baseball historians that may not fully 100% acknowledge the fact that for a long period of time, Major League Baseball was for a lack of a better term, very racist. They obviously, like a lot of people during that time, and even to some extent nowadays, which is very unfortunate, um, believed that the white man was superior to the black man or pretty much any man of color. So, and, and that, and, and also it took, it was very noticeable in sports, particularly in baseball. And, you know, a lot of black players wanted to be given the opportunity to play this sport but unfortunately, the white owners and the white commissioner and pretty much the white sport that at the time that was Major League Baseball did not allow that to happen, which is unfortunate, but it was, it was basically the reality at that time. So a group of people decided that they were going to create several baseball leagues, professional baseball leagues, for black players to be given an opportunity to play professional baseball. And in the end, even though obviously it didn't last until obviously 2020, it still left an indelible mark on baseball itself and pretty much was able, just like a lot of the historical black colleges with football, it allowed people to see these players and realize that they had talent and that in order for these, these teams in major leagues to succeed, they had, they had to start integrating. And obviously with guys like Jackie Robinson and Satchel Paige, you know, those guys helped pave the way for black players to be accepted. And then you have someone like Roberto Clemente, who I've talked about before on this, on this channel, about the fact that he brought a positive light to Latino baseball players. That eventually, you know, now you look at baseball, a lot of the, a, a handful 
of the big stars in Major League Baseball are of Latino descent or are black, you know, or are of color. And that's just because of how the game has changed so much. And if it wasn't for even just the Negro Leagues being created, these players never would have been given an opportunity to really showcase themselves and get noticed by other people. So it, it really worked out for them. Major League players and former presidents, including Barack Obama and also George W. Bush uh, Jr., he, they, um, they, were, they took videos last week um, tipping their cap. So that was, a, that was the thing that uh, Twitter actually created. That there was an account that was created on Twitter that was called, you know, tip your cap, which was basically a salute to the Negro League. So I saw a video from, like I mentioned, former President Barack Obama, former President George W. Bush. I saw, you know, several players that were playing the league, Derek G, uh, or even retired guys like Derek Jeter and some other players that pretty much did the tip of the cap campaign to salute great players to come through that league. So that was a very, that was a very good thing by Major League Baseball. Now, it was, it was said by, you know, Cooperstown and also the Negro League Hall of Fame, which is located in Kansas City, in Kansas City, right by where the Kansas City Royals play, that they were going to basically use the entire month of June and then also early July to kind of in one way or another, honor these, honor these leagues and honor the Negro Leagues in general, honor the teams and things like that. I had heard a small rumor about the possibility that they may decide that they want to, you know, create some old uniforms to kind of honor them in one way or another. But unfortunately, because of COVID-19 and the fact that baseball is starting on July 23rd, we're not going to get that opportunity. So I've seen some online videos and some seminars and, and basically a history. And there's still a lot that I would like to learn. Um, so I don't have all the information in front of me, but I'm just kind of giving you guys an opportunity to learn as much as I know so that we can all you know, have some sort of interesting discussion. And, if, and always, if you have any comments or anything you'd like to share about this subject, please leave a comment. Um, in a few minutes, I'll let you know about where else you can find me so you can contact me and, and we can have these discussions because I'm always looking forward to you know talking with different sports fans about these topics that we bring up. Now, when it comes to the Negro Leagues, there are some very iconic teams, some teams that a lot of people have heard of over their, you know, over the history of that league and pretty much over the history of baseball. Some of them are the Kansas City Monarch, Monarchs, excuse me, the Homestead Grays, particularly the 1931 Grays. And the reason I bring them up is because of this the teams that gave the 1931 Grays the most competition were the Negro League teams, who managed to win five out of 25 games. So even against them, the 1931 Grays recorded an astounding 800 winning average. Overall, the 1931 Grays won at a .846 clip over the greatest teams of all time. A lot of people consider that the Homestead Grays could be considered not only one of the best teams in Negro League history, but also considered one of the greatest teams in baseball history as a whole. And that's saying a lot. I mean, that really right there shows you that at least some people are recognizing the fact that these African-Americans had some tremendous talent. And there's some other teams here, the Chicago American Giants, the Pittsburgh Crawfords. I'm from New Jersey. One of the most iconic teams and the team that everybody knows for the Negro Leagues around here is the Newark Eagles. They actually honored them at the stadium where the Newark Bears used to play. And now I think also Rutgers uh, Newark plays their games as well. It's a stadium just outside of downtown Newark. So if you ever go and check that out, you, you'll see that they've honored um, them in, in several different ways. Um, you also have the New York Black Yankees. That, that, now that's a team that people got a chance to first see Satchel Paige play. Now, what's interesting that I didn't know is that Sancho Page originally had the opportunity to become the first black player to play in the major leagues. But unfortunately, just like a lot of other players, he was, for a lack of a better term, blackballed from getting to the major leagues and he ended up not making it. And then he ended up going to play for the New York Black Yankees in the Negro Leagues for a long time. And he actually eventually got a chance to pitch in the major leagues, but well past his prime, which is an unfortunate thing because I think had he been able to pitch in his prime in the major leagues, he probably would have been one of the most dominant pitchers of his time. I mean, I still think he was, but unfortunately he never got the chance to prove that in his prime pitching in the major leagues. And also another one is the Birmingham Black Barons, who 
actually are a minor league team of the Chicago White Sox. So even then, they're still somewhat honoring those teams in one way or another. Now, there are actually several players that I think a lot of you would probably know that you may be surprised actually played at one time or another in the Negro Leagues. On the receiving end of those tributes that I had mentioned before, where several you know, big name people were honoring them with the tip of the cap campaign and things like that, many of the Negro League's greatest alum were honored. Satchel Page is one. Josh Gibson, another tremendous player, was, was in it. Cool Papa, cool Papa Bell, who I think you can honestly make the argument is possibly the greatest Negro League player in the history of that league. I, I think that's a fair... In my opinion, I think that's a fair statement to make. And Jackie Robinson, obviously, and who began with the Kansas City Monarchs and went on to break the color barrier in the Major Leagues with the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. And that allowed Major League players to, you know, Major League Baseball to integrate with the Black players. Not too long after, with many of its best players gradually following Robinson's path, the Negro League ceased operations. And see, I will say this. I think when the Negro Leagues was created, I think that they didn't, they didn't believe that they wanted to, you know, be around long term. I think that they were hoping what ended up happening happened. I think that eventually Major League Baseball would get its head on straight. They would recognize that black players have tremendous talent and could help these teams win. And they need to be given an opportunity. And once those players were given an opportunity and moved to Major League Baseball, then eventually the Negro Leagues was going to die in one way or another. But I think it was one of those things where it's not unfortunate that it died. It's good because what that meant is that a lot of black players now were getting the chance to go play Major League Baseball and to be recognized right next to the white players as tremendous ball players in their, in their own right. So, you know, you had something like that. And now here's something I think you guys are really going to be surprised. At the age of 16 years young, Willie Mays, yes, the Say Hey Kid who played for the New York and San Francisco Giants, joined the Birmingham Barrett's of the Negro American League. So before he even put on a New York Giants uniform, he actually started his career in the Negro Leagues. I think that's, that's something I personally did not know. So I thought that was something that I wanted to share with you guys. I thought that was pretty interesting. The celebration, which was originally going to be throughout Major League Baseball and all these ballparks, was moved online after a major, major league-wide tribute to baseball's black pioneers scheduled for June 27th was shelved, along with, obviously, major league games, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And like I mentioned before, the Negro League Baseball Hall of Fame is located in Kansas City. So if you ever get an opportunity to go there, maybe not right now because of what's going on in our world health-wise, but at some other point, um, you should definitely go. I, I've never been. I've never been to Kansas City in general, um, but I would certainly love to go and learn more about it. Um, yesterday, just just yesterday, which was what was it, June June seventh? I actually saw Aaron Hicks of the New York Yankees uh, post a video on his social media where he was wearing a. I think he was wearing a New York Black Yankees because obviously he plays for the Yankees, but he was wearing a New York Black Yankees shirt and he was wearing the hat and he tipped his cap and everything. I think that's very cool. Um, the fact that this league was created was one of the best things that could have happened to baseball in general, because like I mentioned before, it allowed black players to make a little bit of a living to showcase their talent, to eventually be given an opportunity to play major league baseball and to be accepted as equals in that sport. Now, are they, st are, has it improved even more? Look at it this way. A lot of the star players you see in the game today are black or of some sort of color. You know, there are still some very talented white players, Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, Cody Bellinger, uh, you know, guys like that. But we also have some very, very talented black players. And we've, had, and we've had very talented black players. We've had guys like Barry Bonds, Ken Griffey Jr., Roberto Clemente. We've had, you know, guys in the, you know, come, we have guys coming up now of different color that are going to become great major league baseball stars. Okay. So it's improved from that standpoint, as far as being accepted as equal, the sad reality is this, it's still not there and we're still not really that close. I remember reading an article a couple of weeks ago from Tori Hunter, who 
I just want to say on record, I think should be considered for the Hall of Fame. I don't know if he'll get in, but we'll see. But Torrey Hunter actually had a no trade clause for, I think, at least two teams from my recollection. One of them was the Boston Red Sox, and another was the Philadelphia Phillies. And the reason he had those was primarily because in both ballparks, he was throwing racial slurs from people in the stands, from fans. He, he had racial slurs being yelled at him from the fans in the stands. And basically, he's like, I want no part of that. So unfortunately, it still goes on. Racism is still a very big thing in sports, in baseball, and especially in our country today, as we've discussed before here on this podcast, and you've seen going on in, in, around this entire country. And the hope is, is that with the opportunity to get, you know, a certain someone out of office and, you know, try to move on with a little bit more, with a guy with a little bit more logic, obviously not as much, honestly, not that much more, but certainly somebody that's not going to go, you know, a wire with everything. Um, you know, we could start to, to make real change. We're already seeing a lot of progress. We're already hearing that certain, you know, sports franchises might be changed their names. Uh, the, the football team in Washington, uh, the Cleveland Indians. I remember North Dakota, North Dakota State University. Uh, they were they used to be called the Fighting Sioux, and they had their name changed several years ago. You know, and you have other teams that are also considering changing their name as well. So we're seeing change from that standpoint. Um, you know, a lot of people have been signing petitions, which is great. You know, if you can do that, you know, try to help out as much as possible. Spread the word as best as you can. There aren't as many protests, but you know what? You know, social media is such a powerful thing that I think we can do a really good job of getting our message across that way. And also, let's, let's throw this, I'll throw this in here. And I said this on a podcast episode about a month and change ago when, you know, George Floyd was, was murdered, basically, and, and I wanted to share my thoughts, is that I think that if you are a parent and you have very young kids who are still trying to develop their minds, you need to teach them about really what's right, right and wrong, and especially about how everyone needs to be treated equally, particularly, you know, blacks and, you know, trans, trans people and gays and, 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 and women as well. Because if you're, let, let, I mean, you look at the situation right now, if you're black, if you're gay, if you're a woman, if you're transgender, if you're anything but, but straight and white, honestly, the way this country has unfortunately, you know, handled that, handled that is that you are ridiculed, you are, you know, physically hurt, you are mentally hurt, you are emotionally hurt, and that's unacceptable. And I will tell you this right now, I'm friends with black people. I am friends with people who are gay. I am friends with people who are trans. I am friends with, 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 with Asians. I'm friends with everybody because the way that I've grown up and the way my parents have raised me is that everybody is equal that, you know, there is no race that is better, there is no religion that is better, and that we all need to understand that. Unfortunately, when you have someone like, you know, our wonderful president, who pretty much tries to emphasize, you know, what is wrong, because he's trying to, you know, entertain the masses that voted for him, you're going to have these type of unfortunate situations where people, particularly of different color and different sex, are being ridiculed on a day-to-day -day basis. And it needs to stop. It really does need to stop. And I'm, and I'm trying my best with you know, signing petitions, sharing things on my social medias as much as I can to try to help. I'm still learning and I apologize if I say anything incorrectly or offensive at any point. It doesn't even have to be this video, it could be anything. Um, just know that I'm trying my absolute best to make sure that I understand 100%, or at least I can understand uh, enough to to really help make the difference that needs to be made but you know hopefully with something like the negro leagues it can re it can result in massive change i mean you take the negro leagues as a really good example because you look at it before the negro leagues black players were ridiculed and prevented from playing major league baseball they have the negro leagues they they have a lot of success they start to get noticed the mlb owners finally decide at one point or another to allow black players to play on their teams. And eventually these guys were able to see how talented they were. And in the history of Major League Baseball since the 1950s, you have seen tremendous players come through the game, you know, particularly that are black and, you know, and also ones that are Asian 
and of different colors that have really done it. And if it wasn't for the Negro Leagues, I don't think we would be anywhere near where we are right now when it comes to integration in, in professional sports and particularly in professional baseball. So I think we should take what the Negro Leagues did, use it as a really good example of we can create real change in our society. And I think if we can do that, it's going to go a long way. I truly believe that if we all work together collectively, we can end racism within 10 to 15 years. Now that seems a long time. It does. But there's a lot that has happened that got us to this point, And it's going to take us quite some time to get past those past those unfortunate you know scenarios and, and stereotypes and racial slurs in order for us to become better people and to recognize you know everyone who gets discriminated as as an equal because that's what we're trying to do at the end of the day and i stand by black people i stand by people of of all color i stand by you know trans transgender people by uh gay you know every you know every sort of you know, you know, way you want to be, way you want to be described, I, I support. And I apologize for not finding the, the correct, you know, terms for it. I apologize. I'm still like learning and I'm still trying to understand completely. So I apologize if this is somewhat offensive to anybody. I don't mean this at all. All I'm saying is that we need to create change and things like the Negro Leaks is, go, you know, shows us that, that this society, our our country can make massive change by just giving these people an opportunity to showcase how talented, how gifted, how pretty much wonderful people are. Because at the end of the day, love destroys all hate. And I think that's going to be a key thing to remember. And that's the thing I would leave you with that at the end of the day, love is going to beat anything and everything. So just continue to remember. And one little piece of advice that I want to give you guys that somebody gave me, that's very true. At the end of the day, all you have is your personal integrity. You know who you are, you know who you're about, you know what you believe in, and you just have to, you know, remember that. You just have to remember that and recognize and focus on being the best person that you can be and try to help out in any way, shape, or form. I try to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. I try to help out people as much as I can, and hopefully with this video, giving you guys a little bit of information about the Negro Leagues and then talking about what's going on in our society a little bit more, I hope that I, you know, helped you guys out a little bit, gave you some, you know, gave you a little bit of motivation and just recognize the fact that, look, I'm not perfect. I never will be. None of us are. And I am, I, I will tell you right now that there are things that are going on in society that I don't fully understand and I will never be able to understand, but I'm going to try as much as possible to help out, to try to learn and to continue to accept everyone for who they are. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes everybody great is that if you can accept who they are and they can accept you for who you are, then the world just becomes a better place right away. But with that being said, that'll do it for this edition of Mofobo Network Presents here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for, for checking this video out. It means a lot to me. Um, obviously, I, you know, this is a little bit you know, of a deeper episode uh, than I'm sure you guys are accustomed to seeing but I felt like it was important to talk about. I felt like it was important to express my feelings towards it. And again, like I said several times, if I said anything incorrectly or offensive, uh, I apologize 100%. Um, I just hope that you guys learned something today. And, and again, recognize that we have an opportunity as a society with something like we saw with the Negro Leagues way back in the day, that we can create you know, real change that could be better for people of all, people of all color, people of all, you know, sex, everything. Um, and, and we could just make the world a better place because that's what we're really trying to do at the end of the day. If you like this video and you want to check out more, go like and subscribe to the Mofobo Network Presents YouTube channel. You can pretty much go right down to the bottom there and you can go check out all the other videos that I've done. I've done a couple other baseball videos. It's kind of funny how like the last couple videos have been mostly about baseball, but I promise you there's other things that we'll discuss without a doubt. We try to post a weekly video, so make sure you hit that notification button so you don't miss any new videos that I post. We also have the Mofobo Network podcast on Anchor and Spotify. Uh, we just did an episode yesterday talking about Patrick Mahomes' mega extension with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, you can check that out as well. And if you want to stay up to date with both of them, 
you go to the Mofobo Network Facebook page and I will constantly post when a new YouTube video and or a new podcast episode is released. So make sure you go, you know, like and check that out and stay up to date with that so you can check out all the new, you know, videos and podcast episodes that I do. But yeah, we also have the podcast, like I mentioned, Anchor, Spotify, just like here on YouTube, we talk about all the things that happen in the world of sports. Um, and I hope you guys check that out as well. Also, make sure to check out my podcast, Devil's State of Mind, which is the New Jersey Devils hockey-based podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network, where we post a, a weekly video every single Monday talking all things New Jersey Devils, talking all things hockey, and everything in between. It's a lot of fun. We've already had some great guests, some great topics, and you can check that out on SoundCloud, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, pretty much wherever you listen to podcasts, you can check it out and you can listen to it. Just search Hockey Podcast Network or Devil State of Mind and you will find the episodes right there. We have a Facebook page as well that will keep you up to date, just like with Mofobo Network, keep you up to date with new episodes that are posted every single Monday. If you want to follow, follow me on my personal accounts, you follow me on Twitter at T-H-E-N-V-P-S-H-O-W and on Instagram at N-V-P-Q-B-11. And if you guys want to, you know, message me, you know, give me new topic ideas, uh, give me, you know, or just want to talk about something that I've discussed, I'd be more than happy to just message me and we'll definitely chat. I love talking with all you sports fans um, about whatever you guys want to discuss. Also, we have social media accounts for Devil's State of Mind. We have a Twitter at Devil's State. We have an Instagram at Devil's State of Mind. And we have a Facebook page, like I mentioned before. And last but certainly not least, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go and check out J-E-T-S Pain, 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 which is a book that I wrote about the pain and suffering of being a Jets fan. It's on sale on Amazon for the price of $19.69 for a hardcover and ebook. And if you're a Jets fan, you probably figured out why I chose that price. So if you're a Jets fan, a football fan, you know somebody who's one of them, or you just want to support me, go check it out on Amazon again, J-E-T-S, pain, pain, pain. So thank you guys so much for watching today. My name is Neil Villapiano, and we will check you all in the next video. Everyone, please continue to be safe. I, I, you know, Obviously, COVID-19 is still alive and well right now, so try your best if you're going out to wear a mask, wear gloves if you want to be a little bit extra safe, you know, keep your social distance, you know, and, and try to, you know, remain, you know, basically safe because we're trying to get rid of this virus as safely and as quickly as we, as we humanly can. So, you know, continue to be safe. Again, thank you so much to all of the, you know, essential workers out there. My, my lovely girlfriend is an essential worker and uh, without her and a lot of the other essential workers, nurses, doctors, uh, people work in grocery stores and everything in between. Without your guys' tireless work day in and day out, we would not be anywhere near close to getting back to some form of normalcy without them. So thank you to them. They truly mean a lot to me. Their work definitely does not go unnoticed. And also, I just want to say this, and I'm going to say it very clearly. Black lives do matter. Trans lives matter. Bi lives matter. You know, pretty much any any single part that has been discriminated against, um, and, and, and it's been very unfortunate that they are, just know from, from me, I will say this, I support you guys 100%, your lives do matter, and I will try my best to continue to help the fight in ending systemic racism, criti you, know, um, you know, racial slurs, and everything that is offensive to black people, to people of different sexes, of people who just get discriminated for just being who they are. Because at the end of the day, the best person that you could be is yourself. So please remember that, stay strong, and God bless.